Sprint qualifying in Miami is over and Max Verstappen is on pole position for the sprint race. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from Sprint Shootout. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. Yes, the sprint qualifying is over and Max took sprint qualifying pole position. But for once, this was actually a surprise when compared to the rest of the session. During the session in SQ1 and SQ2, he was not really looking as impressive as he usually does. Usually, I bring up the times of the fastest driver to see how the times improved during the session. But for once, I am going to be bringing up the times of both Lando Norris in the McLaren and Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And when you look at these two times, you can see how on the mediums, Lando Norris and McLaren did look very strong. And they were faster in SQ2 than Max Verstappen was in SQ3. On the softs, McLaren did fall away very badly. We will be talking about why he fell away later on, because it was not just down to pace, so please do stick around for that. In the meantime though, let's take a look at Verstappen's first lap in SQ1 and compare it to his pole position lap from SQ3 to see what the differences were in both circuit conditions and also a change in tyre compounds. And when you look at these two laps for Verstappen, the difference has become pretty clear. In Sector 1, Verstappen at the high speed change of direction is able to carry a lot more speed in his final run as the soft tyres are providing that extra grip and the circuit has also cleaned up quite a lot, giving Verstappen the confidence, despite him not actually being all that confident in his Red Bull car. The next area where Verstappen gains a bunch of time is into the tight chicane, as once again Verstappen is able to carry more speed, as the mechanical grip of the soft tyres is just giving Max that rotation that he requires. Ultimately, this was the pole position lap time, but as I said, Norris on the medium tyres in SQ2 went faster than Verstappen on soft tyres in SQ3. So he may be on pole, but I'm not sure if Verstappen is actually the fastest driver out there so far this weekend with the Red Bull. We have compared the laps, but let's now take a look at the top speeds that each team reached in qualifying. For this, we're going to be taking a look at their fastest laps and looking at the top speeds that each team was able to reach on their fastest lap by their fastest driver. And what can we see here? Well, what we can see is that it is a return to form for Williams. As for the first time in quite a while, they were the fastest car in a straight line as they reached 344 kilometers per hour. They are seemingly running with less downforce than the rest of the competition, which could be seen because not only are they much faster in a straight line, but they were also quicker to back off than their rivals and hit the brakes to slow the car down. One other big surprise from this top speed chart is McLaren, as Lando Norris was finally able to get close to the top speed of the competition, as McLaren's vastly changed car seems to be providing them with some much needed straight line performance, as the car looks less draggy than it has at previous races. The same though cannot be said for some other teams, as both Alpine and Mercedes are still lacking straight line performance. We know that Alpine is down on power, but Mercedes has the same power unit as McLaren, but they are giving away 6 km per hour down the long back straight, which might go some way to explain their lack of performance. Speaking of performance then, in the midfield, what team was looking good from today's sprint qualifying? Well, one team that looked very strong was V-Carb as Daniel Ricciardo stormed to a P4 finishing qualifying. Let's see how that happened as we compare his lap time to Nico Hülkenberg who qualified in 10th in the rival Haas car. When you look at these laps, what you can see is how they are two very different philosophies leading to similar lap times. The Haas car is very much low downforce, low drag and high top speed. Whereas the V-Carb tends to lack some straight line speed performance, but they make up for it with better downforce and better mechanical grip, which is what you can see here. In the slow speed corners, Ricardo gets a much better run than Hulkenberg, and that edge that Hulkenberg had in a straight line is washed away. In the sprint race, it will be interesting to see if Ricardo can keep up the pace to score a point or two. I don't anticipate that he will finish where he qualified, but it very much could be possible that he scores a 7th or 8th place finish. 
I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top three teams, starting with McLaren. Yes, for the sprint qualifying, I am only going to be talking about the top three teams. But for main Grand Prix qualifying, I will be back to talking about the top five teams. For McLaren, then the sprint qualifying looked like it was going to be a fantastic session. But then in SQ3, when it came to the soft tyre runs, everything started to fizzle out, as Lando Norris went from being fastest in SQ2 to being ninth in SQ3. And really, the damage was done in Sector 1 during the third qualifying, as he could not get any grip on those soft tyres. He was sliding through all of the high-speed downforce corners, which meant that his time was bleeding away. And you can see that here when you compare his Q2 to his Q3 lap. This section here shows how Norris was significantly slower in Q3, despite being on the soft tyres. It looks like he was potentially trying to push too hard on the softs, and the tyres just could not live with how he was pushing them. And once you start sliding on the soft tyres, you will never be able to cool them back down and get the lap time when you are still on the same push lap. In the sprint race, I expect that we will see Lando in the McLaren and also Oscar Piastri come through the field. The McLaren is looking pretty quick in a straight line and on the medium tyres, he will have potential to be lightning fast. He just needs to keep his nose clean at the start of the race, especially as McLaren does not have a lot of spare parts for their new upgrades, which they will need for Grand Prix qualifying and of course the main Grand Prix itself. For Ferrari, it will be Charles Leclerc lining up on the front row for the sprint race alongside Max Verstappen. Despite Leclerc spinning the car in practice and not actually being able to do many laps. The question is though, how does his lap stack up when compared to the Red Bull of Max Verstappen? Well, to find out, I've brought up both lap times of Leclerc and Max Verstappen. And what can we see when we look at these two times? Well, interestingly, Leclerc immediately loses time to Max going into Turn 1, as he stops earlier than Verstappen. It looks like, though, Leclerc was trying to get a better exit, as he does claw back some of that time. But this does seem to be an issue, because you can see here when you look at the Delta times, that at pretty much every single braking zone, Leclerc does lose time when compared to Verstappen, especially through the very slow speed section before the long back straight. Going into the sprint race, Ferrari should be looking good. Leclerc will be pretty lucky that Norris is starting down in P9 and Daniel Ricciardo separates himself from Sainz. Perez will probably get past him pretty easily, but there is no reason why Leclerc cannot secure a third place finish with his teammate finishing the sprint race in fourth place. And Ferrari can continue to extend their advantage over the McLarens, but... McLaren are definitely coming back at them. And finally, for Red Bull, it was very much a shock and a surprise to see Verstappen take sprint pole position, which doesn't really make sense when compared to what we usually see from Red Bull, but so far this weekend, it does make perfect sense. The car looked like it was a bit less of a handful on the soft tyres when compared to McLaren's. Let's now compare Verstappen's lap to teammate Sergio Perez, who is lining up in third place for the sprint race. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that similarly to Leclerc, the time that Verstappen makes up is mainly on the brakes, as Verstappen, despite not feeling confident, still has enormous confidence when compared to his teammates and also the competition. You can also see that Verstappen launches a car more into this corner than Perez, showing how he does have great pace. For the sprint race, it should have been a more tricky race for him, as it does look like McLaren could actually take the fight to them. However, with Norris throwing himself out of contention with the McLaren struggling on the soft tyres, then it does look like that the sprint race should be a simply lovely race for Max Verstappen. So, with that in mind then, what are my top 5 predictions for the sprint race? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P4 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P3 will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, P2 will be Sergio Perez, and yes, Max Verstappen should dominate the sprint race. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.